Welcome back to Idology, the Haley Reinhardt approved show that covers the week in American Idol, whether they show us any singing or not. I hate Greek drama. <laughs> when everything happens off stage. We're here with Melinda Doolittle, season six idol, who is in the studio, as you can see, recording her sophomore album. Hey, Melinda, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Don't fall down. Falling <laughs> off the stage was a big theme of Hollywood Week day one on American Idol. Edic, please. Every time they were showing what was coming up next, they showed her falling. And I was like, okay. We get that she's gonna fall at minute 59 of this show. So we all know that. Bless her heart. I felt kind of bad for her, but I, I blame Randy for it all, really. <laughs> because he was the one talking to her. So why'd you choose that? She was trying to understand what he was saying. You saying that we're older? She was getting a little dizzy. It happens to all of us. <laughs> so I totally get it. I want his happiness to go away. Even the viewers at home start blacking out left and right. I just happened to be sitting on my couch, so it was okay. Get down! For Simone, though, she's in good company. Jennifer Lopez fell on her butt at the AMAs a few years back while she was singing a song called Louboutins. Beyonce face planted, just like Simone. And Haley Reinhardt, as we all know, went down during her Led Zeppelin cover last year recovered splendidly. I don't really have a problem with the fact that they showed the footage. You know, no one held a gun to her head. No one told her to only eat two saltines and a shot glass of water all day. You have that footage, you're going to use it. But I did feel like it kind of reached the exploitative point when they showed it for the 11th time during an hour and then cut off with a cliffhanger. Everybody signs that you can show whatever happens at Hollywood Week on television. We all know that, you right. know, going into it. I just didn't want them to tease it every single commercial break. I thought her audition was one of the best things we heard all oh. week. She was fantastic. She sang her tail off. Watching the tides roll So Melinda, we've got to talk about the Thursday night Hollywood Week episode, which featured absolutely no singing whatsoever. <laughs> The morning after, we get a tweet from Nigel Lithgow, and he's saying, American Idol equals 55 hours of singing and one hour of drama. I love banging the hornet's nest. Ratings up 4% on the week before. Thanks for your support. And then group night never has performances, which is a lie. I've had enough of your disingenuous assertions. Okay, maybe usually on a two hour episode, they'd go a little light on the performances in the first hour, but to give us a full hour, of backstage drama, joy to the world, vomiting, <laughs> and tears. I don't want to go home. We tune in because it's a singing competition and you've got to give us some singing. I'm trying to think back if maybe in past seasons when they've done Hollywood Week, maybe it's been a two hour episode. Right. And so maybe, you know, they did spend that first hour on the drama and then we got to see the singing. And so maybe now that they're down to one hour episodes, maybe it's different. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt but I wanted to hear people sing. Yeah. Right up until my sweet, sweet patient zero started like going in on the devil. I'm speaking myself into being healthy. I'm not letting the devil play with me like that. And I was like, that's kind of worth <laughs> not hearing anybody perform right now. Guess who's on my team? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I've just got to ask just for, for curiosity's sake, what time did you go to bed on group night of Hollywood week? I went to bed at 1.30 in the morning. That was and that was us staying up late. But we were also a little bit older. <laughs> and wiser. And like, no, wait a minute, we need to sleep. We're like 20 years old. We stay up till two in the morning all the time. I'm sorry, but if you don't know the lyrics to Blue Cantrell's Hit Em Up Style by uh, 3 a.m., I mean, it's like the old song says, if you don't know me by now, you will never, you know. ever, ever know me, girl. Same word all the Beaming. time. Beamer, Beamin. Betty's, there's gonna be a lot of open mouth to guppy type action. You, know. you might as well go on to bed. <laughs> and I would say that Hit Em Up Style is probably in my top 100 most played songs on my iTunes. And I don't know half of the damn words to that song. I think they put it on the list to trip people up. Right. Because they knew people would be like, oh, that's my jam. <laughs> and then try to get those lyrics <laughs> downhill. While he was, while he was scheming. Yes. Last question on uh, night two of Hollywood Week. Are you team Heejun or are you not? I am team Heejun doing commentary. <laughs> <laughs> War is on with cowboys. It's not that he doesn't have a pretty voice. It's pretty. It doesn't like stand out completely, right. but it's a, it's a pretty voice. How am I supposed to live without you? Woo. But his commentary 
is golden. He plays it a little bit like he's sort of bewildered. Even the guys are so pretty, I don't know why. But I think he's very aware of what he's saying. And I have to say, I'm not sure I would wanna be in his group. He doesn't seem to actually be working that hard. Cowboy Take Me Away is off on his own, trying to get them to do the box step. But he's working and he Jun is kind of sitting around, making faces at the camera, playing with he his is. hood. And I was like, I don't know about that. I like people who take it seriously, so I need to see a little more work ethic. I feel like he may be more into the whole aspect of like, what's gonna get me some more camera time. Let me hold you. But I still, I still love it. In the show's defense, I really enjoyed Wednesday night's episode. We got to see a lot of different people covering a lot of different songs. So I've got to ask you, who was your favorite from night one? Let me start this by saying I actually had a ton of people that I really, really liked. I was like, wait a minute, y'all are singing for real. <laughs> right. But Erica Van Pelt. There you are, sitting in the garden. Her voice, it's massive, but she has control over it. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head with the word control. It's like taking a monster yeah. truck and, and driving it around like a, like a hairpin turn yes. at, at 100 miles an hour. You call me sugar. Wow, wow. Her styling situation must be worked out immediately. <laughs> You cannot wear a red and white check tablecloth with like a piece of animal hide doubling as a vest. I suppose looks aren't everything. I hope she makes it to the live rounds just yes. so she can work out the clothing situation a little bit. They're gonna work it out for her. I know they are. There were a few people I really liked. Chance you'll be coming back this so we can be there. Jeremy Rosado, I really yeah. liked him and I thought he was funny and I liked that he works in an infectious diseases office. Dude, you are a sicko. I liked Elise Testone. I love that she did Virtual Insanity. I don't care oh, what anyone says, it's a cool she was song. fabulous. And I just can't see that half of us immersed in sin is all we have to give these futures. I think my favorite for the week was Jessica Phillips. I thought All the Man That I Need was amazing. He fills me up. I love that she didn't cover the typical Whitney Fair. I like that she covered something a little yes. slightly more early and obscure. I do, however, need them to stop putting subtitles under her boyfriend. <sighs> like, we can understand him. I'm like a bag of a nerve. This show needs to learn. Just because you come from a Latino background or an Asian background. And what about this wretched refugees? Or have had a stroke or an accident doesn't mean that you are unintelligible for life. We came, we won, we saw, we are. I have a shotgun. Who are you over from, from the Hollywood rounds who made it on through? I'm so sad about this because I loved him during his audition, but Reed Grimm, anytime you mess up Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, I'm gonna be mad at you. Hey, well, look at that sun cake. I saw the other contestants clapping and going crazy. I don't understand. I got a golden ticket, and so does every one of us. What? I'm just expecting them to come out in full court jester regalia next time. What? I'm so happy you took Reed this week because now I can diss somebody else, but. <laughs> Crane Fracker, working my last Anybody nerve, just generally. I think he's one of those contestants who's just under my skin. And the judges love him. Somebody love. I think Shannon McGrain for me is that teenage contestant like Katie Stevens or Thea McGee that's technically proficient, but I feel nothing when she sings. Just when I think you take more than put a fool. But number one, bothersome for me this week was the guy who looks like Danny Gokey, Adam Brock. They're dropping like flies. What he did with Walking in Memphis was terrible. Gospel music in the I actually like his voice, like his tone is great. It is. His choices with Walking in Memphis, I'm not completely sure about. And I believe that he said that he's he's got a black woman on the inside of him. There's a large black woman trapped inside of my body. Wait, I don't know. And he did just recently tweet me and say that I was one of the reasons that he auditioned for American Idol. So I want to tread carefully with this <laughs> because, hey, you know, I like you because you said that. Thank you so much, Adam. However, I would love for him to kind of stick with the melody so I know the song. I barely recognize Walking in Memphis. They showed a snippet of him singing Stormy Weather in his audition, and that was really oh. good. Stop! It was gorgeous. And maybe it's just that we've never heard a black woman sing Walking in Memphis yet. So see, maybe it's just, that's what's happening. We'll leave it at that.
This conversation is over.